In this episode we are going to attempt to restore these awful brake calipers of my BMW E28. Hello everybody and welcome. Today is finally a beautiful day in Belgium and we are currently locked down by the coronavirus. So there's no better time to work on the cars than today. I've got a video lined up doing a restoration on the BMW's brakes because those are in desperate need of some love and they are one of the final things that we need to do before the car can be deemed roadworthy. The first time I was doing brake work I got really intimidated because it is something vital to the car's safety. You don't want to be driving around and just having no brakes. Yahoo! I'm going to do this video with basic hand tools and basic equipment to inspire you to do something similar like this because doing a brake restoration is something that improves the way your car looks, it improves the way it drives, it improves safety uh, and it's an overall easy and pretty cheap job. So stick around, it's going to be a good one. Doing this job on my BMW has been a long time coming. The parts have been laying around in my garage for ages but today they are finally going to be installed. My garage is currently occupied so we are going to do the work outside. I parked it right on the edge of the sunlight so at least both sides of the car look like they are two-tone. If you want to know what happened with this paint job and you haven't checked it out already, check out the last episode on the BMW restoration, the link will be in the description. But now onto the brakes. The car has been sitting outside for half a decade, so you can imagine the amount of rust that has collected behind these wheels. But to really get a grasp of it, we're going to start by taking off the rims. My brakes look like they have been sitting on the bottom of the ocean for 20 years. The calipers are stuck so they are constantly dragging and the brake rotors are pitted and have big corrosion marks. Driving like this would just be unsafe. It is going to take a lot of work to make these look decent again but there is no way around it so we'll start by taking the calipers off. First I slightly undo the brake lines because usually they are pretty tight. It's easier to do this now when the caliper is still attached to the hub. The caliper itself is attached to the hub with two bolts but before undoing them I'm loosening the slider pins as well. I only have one small allen key that fits so I'm using a box end wrench to get more leverage. Then the whole caliper assembly can be removed. I'm using my impact because the bolts are very tight, but if you don't own one, a normal socket wrench should be able to do the job.
that's the first one done, now let's repeat it on the other three. Now it's time to remove the discs. Generally they are held down by a tiny screw to keep the disc attached to the hub. My screw needs an allen key to be removed but as you can see they are quite rusty. To keep the bolt from stripping I'm hitting it with a hammer to make sure it is all the way in there. The first one I tried to remove stripped almost instantly. To get the bolt out I got an oversized Torx bit and banged it into the hole hoping that I could get it out with the impact, which worked. The older screws came out relatively easy. With all the trashed brake components removed, we can take a look at what's worth keeping. The brake discs are officially FUBAR, so they are going in the trash. The calipers need to be taken apart completely and rebuilt. So we'll start by stripping off all the parts. All this rusty junk is going in the trash as it's not worth keeping. So the brake calipers are almost disassembled. The only thing that needs to still be done is getting the piston out of the caliper. I'm going to use my air compressor and some compressed air to get it out. But if you don't own an air compressor, I would advise you to use the brake system that is on the car to get them out. To do this, you would have to hook up the brake calipers back to uh, the brake lines and then by pushing the brake pedal you put pressure onto the pistons and they can pop out. If you don't really know what I'm talking about I do this in the Nürburgring preparations video. Uh, I did this for my Mark 1 Golf so if you want to see how this looks just go check out that episode. To press the piston out I'm sealing my dust gun with some duct tape. This way I can put pressure onto the brake line port to press them out. With all the calipers now fully disassembled, I'm trying to knock off as much of the rust as I can with a steel brush on my grinder, while my lady friend uses a manual brush to clear all the hard to reach areas. Then I'm giving them a quick clean. They already look a million times better than when we started. But leaving them to dry a couple of hours has already made them start to rust again. So we are going to give them a final sand with a 400 grit and a scotch bright pad. Next I give them a clean with acetone before masking off certain parts of the caliper. You don't want to spray the inside of your cylinder, the sliders and the threads from the brake lines and bleeding nipple. So all of these are getting masked.
Brakes get really hot when they are used, so to ensure the paint will stay on, I'm using paint specifically for brake calipers. I could use my spray gun for a better finish, but in this video I want to show the results you can achieve with just using spray cans. We're painting the parts outside because it's important to do this in a well ventilated area. First I apply a light coat of primer and then two to three heavier coats. I'm giving the primer three hours to dry. While the primer is drying, I'm going to try to make these rusty dust shields look a little bit better by giving them a quick coat of paint. Then I apply 3 silver base coats with 5 minutes in between. After 30 minutes of letting the last base coat dry, I'm applying 3 coats of satin clear coat to finish painting. The difference with before is night and day. I'm starting to get excited to know how they will look on the car because I reckon it will look really good. I have ordered a rebuild kit for both the front and rear calipers so everything can be replaced. We've got new brake pads, sliders, pistons, seals and bleed screws. I can't wait to see all of this installed on the calipers so let's get to it. First I install the pressure seal. Then I put the protection boot over the piston before positioning it into the cutout. I make sure it's properly in there before I start to press the piston in. Pressing the piston in can take some force, so an F-clamp comes in handy. Then I mount the slider bushings and screw in the bleeder nipple. Next I'm applying the sliders with the supplied grease and screw them into the bushings. Lastly, the new brake pads can go in. I forgot to buy these brackets, so I'm going to give them a quick coat of paint off camera. But overall the new unit looks really good. Now it's just a matter of doing the other tree and then they can go on the car. The difference with the rusty garbage we started with is amazing. It is a lot of work, but seeing the end result gives me a lot of fulfillment. But it's going to get even better when we get them mounted onto the car. 
But first, we need to unmask the hub. That looks a thousand times better as well, but before the discs can go on, I need to refit the handbrake assembly. After that is done, the restored calipers can go on with the new rotors. Now let's take a moment to admire the hard work we have done. They look pretty much perfect to me apart from one bastard fly that decided he wanted to take a nap into my wet paint. They make the entire car look less of a rust bucket and more like a Bavarian butterfly. And it's results like this that motivate me to keep going. The next day I woke up early to bleed the brakes which is the last step before she can sit on her wheels again. When checking the brake fluid I noticed that it is really dirty and that there is a lot of filth inside the container. So with a syringe all the fluid was extracted and the inside of the container cleaned. Next I'm filling it up with fresh DOT4 brake fluid. The DOT is a value for the fluid's temperature capabilities and its composition. So always check what kind needs to go in your vehicle. For bleeding the brakes I'm using a 7mm wrench and a piece of aquarium tube that goes into a plastic bottle. But most importantly, I'm using my girlfriend to stomp onto the brake pedal. I start at the caliper that is farthest away from the brake master cylinder. The tube gets placed over the bleed nipple. Then I ask my girlfriend to stomp on the brake three times and then holding it the third time. Then I open the bleed screw which will send brake fluid through the transparent tube. If there are air bubbles in the fluid, the process needs to be repeated until the fluid is clear and bubble free. We do this for every caliper going from the one first away from the reservoir to the one that is the closest. All of this while keeping an eye on the fluid level and leaving the cap of the container. When the bleeding is done, the wheels can go back on and it's time to test if the brakes work. Success! Now she can get parked back into her resting spot with her shiny new brakes lurking from between the rims. That is the end of today's episode, I hope you enjoyed watching this restoration and I hope I have at least inspired some of you to do a similar job like this. If you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and until next time.